Fish. Can I borrow your fish? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, it's 1030. Give me a little more than that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to um, Youth Sunday. Uh, my name is Tammy Wisner. I'm the director of youth ministries here at St. Paul's. And I'm excited to welcome all of you um, to Youth Sunday. Um, we get to, uh, once a year, bring our talented youth uh, to worship with you, or to, I should say, to lead you in worship. And, um, and so we're excited to share that with you this morning. And so thank you for being here. And um, if you received a fish on your way in, um, everyone should have received one. If you don't have one, just raise your hand and um, one of our disciple giving fish people will um, pass one out to you. So if you don't have one, make sure you raise your hand. Everybody's gonna need one. Um, and what we're gonna ask you to do is um, as the service is getting started, if you would, um, write your name on that fish. So like you, if you only have one for your family, that's fine. Like if it was my fish, I would put um, the Wisners on it and I'd put Tammy and Mike, um, probably Rocky and Doa as well, like whatever. But, um, but you can put your family people on your fish. And then when it comes time for our prayer time, we're going to have a prayer song after, um, after Lucy leads us in prayer. And during that prayer song, we're going to invite you to stand up um, and turn to people near you and exchange fish with those people. And you can pass it multiple times. Eventually, you'll end up with somebody's fish. Somebody else will hopefully end up with your fish. And then we're going to ask you to um, take that fish home with you. And to be keeping that family or that person that's on your fish in prayer throughout the next week or the next several weeks as we lead up to Easter um, during this Lenten season, we're just going to invite you to be in a community of prayer um, with someone in our congregation. It doesn't matter um, if you have the same fish as somebody else has, you know, if you exchange with someone or you just have a random one. It also doesn't matter if you know that person or that family personally. Um, you, they are a part of your church family. And so we're just going to ask you to, um, to take that with you, pray for those folks that are on your fish. Um, so that means make sure that you write your name on the back. I know someone in the first service got a blank fish. So I said, well, just pray for all of St. Paul's. So, um, but we do invite you to do that. Make sure that you do that. There should be pens um, in your place there as well. So this service this morning, um, we're going to be talking about love 
um, is grateful and that we as a youth ministry are so grateful for the community that we have amongst our youth but also just within our larger church and so we are glad that you are here you're going to hear from four amazing senior speakers and just get a little window into um, the blessing that I get to experience each and every day by working with our students so I'm going to invite Katie to come forward and if you would please stand and join Katie in the call to worship We gather to worship together. Different people, different lives, different histories. Yet all children of the same parent. Created lovingly by the source of all life. We gather to reconnect with one another. Different people, different lives, different histories. Yet all disciples of one teacher. Jesus, the word made flesh, dwelling among us. We gather with different joys and sorrows, different hopes and fears. Yet one people with one God, one faith, one baptism. Let us open ourselves to the presence of God, that our us. Please remain standing and join us in singing, They'll Know We Are Christians. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Claire Majeric. And I'm Cl- Katie Clark. So imagine this. You're in Costco on a Sunday afternoon. It's cold and you're hungry and you haven't eaten anything for hours. People are everywhere. There are the slow walkers, the kids that are licking everything. And there's that one person that's standing in the middle of the aisle doing nothing except staring into space. You start to lose hope. You think, I'm never going to get through Costco. I'm never going to, like, eat lunch. I'm, you're stuck. (laughs) When suddenly, you see it. The light at the end of the hallway. The hope. Something that will tide you through Costco. It's the sample stand. (laughs) 
It's giving out fish and bread. But the manager says there's no more food and starts pushing people away. But that faithful employee that's working the sample stand says that they have enough and they welcome everybody. People start to leave. They think, there's not enough food for me. But then the employee gives out enough food and there's extra for everybody. Mark 14 says, Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. This is like the manager. He doesn't believe that there's enough food for everyone and tries to push them away. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. This is like the employee. They, re they repeatedly encourage everyone that there is enough food and to just believe. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. That's the manager again, pushing away. And he said, bring them here to me. The employee and Jesus encourage us to stay and believe. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left of, over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. In our lives, we all have managers and employees. The managers don't believe and try and push us away. But the managers need to be shown love to be drawn closer to God. The employees of our lives will pull us closer to God and love us unconditionally. My challenge for you this week is to be an employee, to pull others closer to God and show love, because as a community, it's our job to practice that and bring people closer to God. Thank you. As we begin to gather our thoughts into a time of prayer, we remind you to think about one of the managers in your life, and maybe you can say a short prayer for them that they can feel the love of God and pray that you and the people around you can be the employees that can spread the love of God to others. Would you pray with me? Lord, we come to you from our busy weeks. We carry our baggage, and Lord, we ask that you help us sit down that baggage at the door of this sanctuary and come and be with you in your forgiveness and in your love. God, we ask that we can cry with those who are crying, that we can celebrate with those who are celebrating. Help us to fill your world with our colors and with the gifts that you give us. Lord, we lift up the prayers that are weighing heavy on our hearts, and we lift up the joys that are bringing the butterflies in our stomach. We pray for those on the prayer list, and we pray for those that aren't there but that are in our hearts. We pray for those who are grieving, and we pray for the church that we can make the right decisions in every way, shape, and form. We pray for our world, for our community, for those in power in our townships and in our city. And Lord, most importantly, we pray to you with the utmost gratitude. We are grateful that we have things that others don't. Help us to spread our love and spread our fortunes to other people who don't have as much as we do. And help us to be grateful for the opportunity to spread your gospel and spread your word. Lord, we lift up all these prayers today in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our kingdom come, our will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. And I remind you to pass your fish as we sing our prayer song. Children, come up for your message. Good morning, boys and girls. Wow, there's a lot of you. Good morning. Sit right in first row. Yeah, of course. Good morning. Just 
still got two more. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, guys. Let me ask you a question. What do you think a community is? Huh? Um, like a couple of people working together. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, everybody, like, a team. Yeah. Do you think you have a community here at St. Paul's? We have relationships with everyone in our communities. Can you think about anyone you have a relationship with? Yeah. Huh. Who do you have a relationship with? Who, who do um, you? My mom. Your mom? Yeah. Who do you have a relationship with? Do you, your parents? Yeah. I have a relationship with my mom and my grandma and everyone in here. Yeah? My sister. Your sister. All right, I have some books here. Do you think one of you could help me carry them? Do you want to help me? No. So can you come stand right here? Now, holding this one book, pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what if we just keep adding and wait? I think you can handle it? Probably. Probably. Adding. Does it get a bit heavy? Mm -hmm. Start weighing it down. Now, what if we have someone else? Can I have someone else? You want to come? You, right there. You can come up, too. Now, say we give one, two, another person. Now, it's a lot easier having something, having other people carrying around. Well, in a community like St. Paul's, we help carry our love and faith with us, and we all share something in common. Do you know what we share in common with everyone here? Do you, do you any? Yeah? God's love. God's love, exactly. <laughs> now, thank you. Now, can you all repeat after me as we pray? Dear God, Dear God, God, thank you for our communities. Thank you for our communities. And the relationships we have with others. And the relationships we have with others. Thank you for the love you give us. Thank you for the love you give us. And help us give that love to others. And help us give that love to others. Amen. Amen. Now, if you want to follow me out to Children's Church, you can. And if you want to go back to your parents. Good morning, friends. <laughs> As you all know, it's a Sunday morning, the start of a new week, so there's a lot to be thankful for. If you guys actually don't mind, can I write out some of my weekly thank you notes right now? Anyone, anyone mind? No? Perfect. All right. Thank you. Cameron Turner, for always being the voice on retreats that everyone dodges first thing in the morning. <laughs> we love your personality, just not before 7 a.m. or a glass of coffee. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Cameron Turner, but most of you know me as Cameron and I'm the one performing with my viola in worship a lot. This fall, I will be attending Slippery Rock University to study music therapy. My love for music has led me to choose this as my major because I always knew that I wanted to be able to help others through music. As a music therapist, I will be able to use my abilities to help my clients achieve their non-musical goals through music. 
My passion for helping others grew out of my love for going on work camp trips with the youth group. My favorite work camp trip was last year when we went to Oklahoma. I really liked how the community included and welcomed us into their routine. Our time spent working on the pastor's garage reached far beyond the physical needs of this community. When I was younger, I went to a different church and after going to cat camp for the first time here, I had made so many friends that I started coming to St. Paul's. After a few years in mid-high, the time came for confirmation. I was really excited to join, but I wasn't sure what it was about or who God was. Participating in confirmation helped to develop me into the person that I am today. Through that experience, I gained a better understanding of who God is and what it truly meant to be in relationship with him. As I've grown in my relationship with God, I have been able to overcome challenges that I didn't expect. Last year, I was really struggling because I had to miss out on the activities that I love, like playing my viola and dancing because of a concussion. If I'm being honest, I was kind of mad at God. The support that surrounded me from my church community helped me to see past my anger and take the time I needed to heal. This was a time that I had to lean on my favorite scripture from Jeremiah 29, 11, which reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I am grateful that God has given me enough, another unique way to express my love for music through my ability to dance. I started dancing when I was five, and after trying several studios, I have found the one that is home for me. For the past five years, I have grown as a dancer, learning discipline, confidence, and respect for myself. Dance has been a way for me to express my emotions in a positive way. As I became more and more confident in my abilities, God led me to audition for the Pittsburgh Youth Concert Orchestra. For five years now, I have been a part of a community blessed by God and providing me with the opportunity to meet some of my lifelong friends. I have also had the opportunity to play some really cool music that I would not have been introduced to otherwise. Last summer, I took a huge leap of faith going to annual conference when I only knew one other person that would be there. It was so cool to learn how laws are written, discussed, and passed for the United Methodist Church to follow. I loved being a part of this experience that included all the different churches and districts throughout Western Pennsylvania. By the end of conference, I had made so many new friends that I felt compelled to join the youth ministry team, which helps to organize and plan big events like the Spark Youth Conference. Over 700 United Methodist youth met at Station Square this past January to learn and worship together, and I was a part of that leadership team. This was a great way for me to step out of my comfort zone called St. Paul's and get ready for my, mo my most exciting adventure yet, college life. Even though I am nervous to go, I will continue to lean on my favorite Bible verse from Jeremiah 29, 11, praying God's words for me. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you for you listening to me play my viola over the years. I am so happy that I was able to share my story with you all. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Leroy, for always keeping us on our toes when you introduce yourself. What's it going to be today, we wonder? Leroy? Leroy? Jason? Michael? Or Spicy Indian? <laughs> we really never seem to get it right. Hi, my name is Leroy. Actually, let's clear the air. My name is Leroy Jason Michael, but you can call me any one of those names, or even Leroy, or Jason, or even Michael, <laughs> whatever you may know me by. <laughs> anyway, I will be attending The Ohio State University next fall studying biomedical engineering. When I think about my faith journey, the first person I think of is, well, faith. When our family first moved to Pittsburgh in 2004, we visited many churches in the area, but finally settled on this one because of faith. She opened up the doors of St. Paul's and welcomed us with open arms. My mom didn't have a driver's license back then, and faith would always pick us up every week to take us to church activities on Wednesday nights. Whether it was pouring down rain or snowing, faith would always be there and put me in the car seat, buckle me up, and ask me how my day at school was. 
Church has always felt like a second home to me and a place I could come to throughout my life. At first, it was singing in the children's choir where I found my love for music. If you know me well enough, you know I'm always singing or humming a tune or finding any way I can pull a song lyric into a normal conversation. As I grew up and joined the much-anticipated youth group, I was overwhelmed and struggled to find where I could fit in as there were kids a couple years older than me and then there were kids who were seniors in high school. I enjoyed going to mid-high and goofing around while Tammy was trying her every last breath to pull together a meaningful conversation out of us. It was all fun and games until confirmation when I first started to find a connection with God. It was one of the first times where I wasn't just going through the motions, but actually knowing what it meant to have a relationship with God. Fast forward a couple of weeks, and I was going to start high school. Little did I know how my faith would be tested in the upcoming months. Tearing my ACL and my lateral and medial meniscus in my left knee during a basketball game brought me a pain I never felt before, mentally and physically. Hearing the doctor say those dreaded words, you may never be able to participate in sports again, really hurt me emotionally and put me in a dark place. I found that at these low moments, putting my problems in God's hands and laying my burdens on Him really encouraged me to persevere through my struggle and embrace the good in every situation. This is why I always try to have a smile on my face no matter what is going on, because your one smile can have a lasting impact on someone else's life, just as Faith's smile has touched so many lives in this church. I was blessed to have such an amazing family and friends who supported me during this trying time in my life. I can proudly say that I proved the doctors wrong as I continued to participate in all kinds of sports today by God's grace. As I continued to grow in my faith, I experienced the enjoyments of the various trips that our church is so blessed to have gone on. Being able to attend work camp this past year was one of the most memorable experiences I've had. To help a community build a community center where all kids of all ages can come, have fun, and enjoy being a kid there was truly a blessing. If there's any advice I can offer to underclassmen is that before you know it, high school will be over and your real life will begin. Don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone and enjoy every trip and every activity this amazing group has to offer. Don't be afraid to talk to new people and the younger kids who can get annoying sometimes, but trust me, you were all that annoying person at some point. I sure was. (laughs) Lastly, don't be afraid to have a good time. You may even make a new friend or two. I have been so grateful to have such an amazing church family who has molded me into the man I am today. Thank you, and God bless. Please rise and join us in singing Reckless Love. Oh 
be seated. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy Hess, for taking time off your Irish dancing tour. We do wish you had worn your leprechaun getup for this morning's festivities. Good morning, friends. My name is Lucy Hess. I'm a senior at Pine Ridgeland High School, and next year I'll be attending Kent State University to major in musical theater. I have been coming to St. Paul's for as long as I can remember, and since I was small, I was always more interested in the adult service rather than children's church or Sunday school, so I never really attended mid-high or senior high, but I did attend confirmation. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't have a community of support and people at St. Paul's. St. Paul's has given me countless opportunities to perform and to share my talents, and for that, I am grateful. I actually did my very first musical here at St. Paul's, and by musical, I mean I said one line, and then I sat in my mom's lap for the rest of the show. <laughs> for anyone who's spoken with me recently, you may know that I have been involved in a very stressful audition process that was mandatory for my admission to college. Uh, over the past five months, I have auditioned and been told no more times than I would care to admit. The audition process to get into a musical theater program is trying physically and emotionally. Essentially, for every school I've auditioned for, I'm auditioning against around 1,400 applicants um, for a total of 10 spots. So the odds aren't great, and getting repeatedly rejected doesn't feel great either. Uh, it made me doubt my talent, my ability, and brought me a great deal of hopelessness along the way. Even though every rejection letter is polite and it aims to tell you that the rejection isn't a reflection of your talent, it's hard not to think about it that way. Um, this experience has been extremely difficult and when I think back on the St. Paul's community and all the ways you lift me up, it makes a big difference. My weeks have been full of stress for the past five months and I've almost forgotten about God during the week, but then when I come back to St. Paul's, it's almost like a homing platform for me. Every Sunday I come back, all that stress just leaves my body and I'm refreshed for another week and I can push through another week and I know it's gonna end sometime and it finally has, so yay. <laughs> um, every time I've sung at a service at St. Paul's, so many people have come up to me and been so complimentary and so lovely and for somebody that has been rejected so many times and has been really down on themselves, those compliments make a world of difference. St. Paul's has reminded me that God has given me a voice that is a gift. Uh, my voice is a gift that can touch the hearts of listeners, and St. Paul's has reminded me that nobody can take that away from me, not even a rejection letter. I have really high standards for myself, and... So when I sing at church, oftentimes I feel like the performance is the worst singing that has ever come out of my mouth, ever. And no matter if I think that, everyone is so kind and receptive to my performance, so you guys are either really nice or good liars. Um, I'm going to maintain that you are the former. 
And over my past four years of high school, as I'm coming to St. Paul's, I've set a personal goal for myself, which is to leave every person I met happier than when I first met them. St. Paul's has given me a wonderful place to practice that goal. Every person I say hello to is eager to ask me how I am, and more importantly, are ready to, ask, uh, are ready to answer when I ask. You are so open to conversation, and I admire how willing you all are to take time after church to talk with the youth about our futures and our faith. I sincerely hope that I've achieved my goal here at St. Paul's, because I know you have all made me happier each time I speak with you. Thank you for that, and peace be with you all. Thank you, middle-aged, cool moms, for inspiring how Joseph Franz dresses and acts day after day. <laughs> it's almost like his style and attitude embodies the perfect balance between a spunky kindergarten teacher and a grandpa who does not want to do laundry. <laughs> Thank you for that, Jordan. <laughs> Always, anytime. Um, one thing you might not know about me is when I was really little, I hated church, which when I look back on it now, seems crazy to me. Um, but it's true. I would kick and I'd scream because I didn't want to go. But in eighth grade, my mom dragged me into the confirmation class, and I was a bit hesitant at first. But it turns out that I loved confirmation. I don't know. Maybe I was just the odd one out, but I did. I loved learning about the different religions and the history behind them, and even the history behind our own religion. Maybe that's why I picked multicultural religious studies for my major. But it wasn't until Surf City that following summer that I knew I had found my place at St. Paul's. KG was our speaker for the week, and he told us about when he was a student at Surf City, all he wanted to do was catch a fish. So the one day he laid on the dock with his hands out in front of him in the water, trying to catch a fish with his bare hands. He finally got one, and he was so excited that he threw it up in the air, hitting a girl coming down the zip line. Which, prompting the announcers at breakfast the next morning to strongly remind us to please leave the fish in the water. But about midnight that night, we're sitting in our cabin, and Tom Cully leans over to us and says, Hey, we need to catch a fish. So we go out to the lake, and we grab a drawstring bag, and we sat there for about an hour and a half trying to catch a fish. We finally caught two. They were probably about like this big, not huge fish. Tom's saying they're this big. They were this big. <laughs> but anyway, so we brought them back into our cabin and put them in a bucket and let them sit there the entire week. But it earned us a lot of points for the Blue Typhoon Fruity Loops. Um... But in the fall, when I moved up to senior high, things really started to take off for me. These last four years have been the time I built relationships that have turned into lifelong friendships, hopefully. Um, my senior high leaders have pushed me out of my comfort zone. For example, my first year of work camp was Lexington, South Carolina, and 14-year-old me thought he was going to get a nice, easy painting site. But that's not what happened. I got thrown onto a roof with Kara Clark and Rob Montgomery. I was terrified of falling to my death, even though the roof was probably only about 12 feet. The first two days, I avoided any possibility of going on this roof. But on day three, Mr. Moe had had it with my shenanigans, and onto the roof I went. But once I was up there, I realized that it wasn't that bad. And 14-year-old me helped shingle a roof with Brian Venturella and Matt Bagley. And if you know anything about those two, that was an experience in and of itself. Um, but one of the greatest things I think about St. Paul's is the genuine community that we have built here. At the beginning of summer last year, I developed a rare bacterial knee infection, which if you know anything about me, I'm a lightning bolt for that kind of stuff. I was so frustrated with my doctors that I had to miss the last two weeks of school. I missed Allison Bergeron's grad party. I even missed the churchyard sale, which, thinking about it now, probably wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> um, but we weren't, I wasn't even sure if I'd be able to go to Oklahoma for work camp that summer. But I'm so thankful that Tammy, Tom, Karen, and Jeff, and Kara, and Milo, and everyone else who came down to visit me and played games with me and just sat there and talked and encouraged me that no matter what I was missing, they all still cared and wanted me to get well. Because I've had so many great people invest in my life, 
It has made me want to do the same, bringing me to the place where I think I've grown the most in my faith, is on a Wednesday night as a leader for our mid-high students. A lot of people think that middle schoolers don't care about anything, but, they, but once they settle down, we have a really great discussion, and you can actually talk to them and learn with them, and they bring a whole level, new level of energy to my week. But these are only a few stories that have taught me about my time in youth group, that there is a great community of people here at St. Paul's that only wants the best for you. And I guess what I'm trying to say is thank you to St. Paul's for making me the person that I am today. Please join us and stand and sing, Your Grace is Enough. Good morning, everyone. May God's grace and peace be with us all as we are gathered here this morning to not only worship God, but to celebrate the youth of St. Paul's. I am Mary Ellen Dixon, 
And it is a pleasure for me to be a part of our youth service this morning because I am here representing St. Paul's United Methodist Women, and I'm here to present our mission recognition pin. From the beginning in 1869, United Methodist Women has focused its ministry on women, children, and youth. Today, our 800,000 members work with youth organizations globally by contributing financially, but more importantly, by contributing our time and talent to programs and projects that support and empower youth. And if you would like more information on the work of the United Methodist Women, please contact Patty Cooknick or Sherry Schutz. You know, in the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, we meet an average young man living in Jerusalem who gets a call from God one day. Now, during this call, as Cameron so eloquently mentioned earlier, God says to Jeremiah, I have holy plans for you. I want you to be a prophet, a messenger to the nations. That's what I've had in mind for you before you saw the light of day. Now, Jeremiah replies, hold on, God, look at me. I don't know anything. I'm just a kid. But God continues, listen, Jeremiah, I'll tell you where to go, and you go. And I'll tell you what to say, and you say it, even when you don't want to. And don't be afraid of anything or anyone. I'll be right there with you, looking after you. And even though Jeremiah lost friends along the way, and a lot of folks uh, chose not to listen to him, they even threatened his life, Jeremiah remained faithful to God's call on his life. Now, I think you will agree with me that before they even saw the light of day, God had a call on the life of each and every one of our youth and children, actually, at St. Paul's. And I think you'll agree with me that St. Paul's youth group is an extraordinary stop on our children's road for each one of our young men and women as they prepare to answer God's call on their life. And if I tell you that months before our church called Tammy to come to St. Paul's, our prayer, tre- our prayer team prayed for God to send us the right person. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that God answered our prayers. And I know that you'll agree with me that as wonderful as Tammy is, she can't do it all by herself and have a successful program. So God called helpers into the field, helpers who have made a long-term commitment to our youth, who have not only opened their hearts, but their homes, and even given up their vacation time for our youth. Helpers who love our kids with a welcoming, non-judgmental heart. Tammy told me that the kids trust these helpers with their feelings, their secrets, their stories, and that these folks generously give of their time, their resources, and their love for each and every one of our kids. Listen to Tammy's own words. They have been my right hand and my left hand for as long as I've been doing ministry at St. Paul's. Without them, youth ministry would look very different and be a lot less exciting. They love St. Paul's and the students within it. I can't imagine youth ministry without them at my side. Now, Scripture doesn't tell us who those special folks were in Jeremiah's life. We'll never know who might have opened their hearts in their home, who might have listened to Jeremiah's secrets, his stories, and maybe even listened while Jeremiah sifted through his thoughts and his feelings about answering God's call. Well, we'll never know about Jeremiah. Guess what? We know who those people are for the youth of St. Paul's. And so it is a pleasure for St. Paul's United Methodist Women to recognize and present our mission recognition pin this morning to Tom and Heather Colley.
this award was going to Tammy and she did that. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Here, look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Kelly here this morning. I must have asked him about 600 times, are you sure you're going to be able to sneak out of work? <laughs> and I thought he was going to show up in his scrubs and coat, but he changed on the way here. So um, what a blessing they are to me. And just as we go to move into our time of offering, um, I just want to remind you that um, your offering um, is part, in part, it is your financial gifts that you give so generously of, but it is also um, the time and the talent that you um, are willing to give to our church community and to those outside of our doors. And so I want to also just extend a thank you to Amy Austin Taggart for her beautiful work with our PowerPoint. Um, she took the creative ideas of our students and put them onto the screen. Um, and I want to remind all of you as well, if you want to put one of these forms in your um, offering plate, the Nomic group needs help um, with their Palm Sunday Easter extravaganza and would love to have your um, resources and time in that way as well. So I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward as we begin to prepare for our offering. For your lifelong commitment to being an usher. <laughs> The show really would go on without you both. Although on your way out, be sure to leave your tips and tricks with Rob Campbell. He can use some.
morning. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you will extend your love through us. May you bless our offering and allow us to do your work through these gifts. Amen. And lastly, thank you, congregation. Though we may not know all of your names, we always can count on you for stopping us in the halls and saying, look how much you've grown. <laughs> now, please stand with us as you're able and join us in our last song and all the people say amen.